Lilith is a female figure in Mesopotamia and Judaic mythology, and according to some beliefs, the first wife of Adam. But what do we really know about this mysterious figure that some call the female version of Satan himself? Here are 12 facts you may not have known about Lilith. Number one, she was Adam's first wife. Lilith's role as Adam's first wife became part of the Jewish tradition when she was mentioned in the Marash, a text that interprets and explains Hebrew scriptures. The Marash elaborated on inconsistencies in the book of Genesis. One of the inconsistencies is that in Genesis 1, man and woman are created at the same time. But in Genesis 2, Eve is the product of Adam's rib. To reconcile these accounts, there must have been another woman in Adam's life, into Lilith. She was depicted as Adam's first wife in the alphabet of Ben Sarah, a work that became part of Jewish tradition around the year 1000 CE. According to this interpretation, their marriage eventually failed and she left, prompting God to create Eve. Number two, her name isn't mentioned directly in the Bible. Lilith appears in the Bible only once and is not by name. In Isaiah 34, 14, the author refers to the night bird, night monster, or nocturnal creature, depending on which translation of the Bible you're reading. When the book of Isaiah mentions a nefarious night creature living among the ruins, biblical scholars believe the passage is referring to Lilith. Number three, her origins are in Mesopotamian mythology. Lilith was likely derived from the ancient Sumerian myth of Lilithu, the demon spirits of men and women who passed young. Lilith's more horrific aspects can be traced back to Lamashtu, the daughter of the Mesopotamian sky god Anu. Lamashtu was said to slay children and feast on men. Lilith also appears in the Epic of Gilgamesh on a tablet dated to roughly 2000 BCE. There is a demon that Gilgamesh forces to flee and take refuge in a desolate area, an element that remains consistent in her tale over time. Number four, the Dead Sea Scrolls associate her with other demons. The Dead Sea Scrolls, a group of some 800 texts discovered in the 1940s and 1950s on the West Bank near the Dead Sea, mention Lilith. The scrolls include Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek prayers, legal documents, biblical writings, and apocryphal works. Lilith is referred to in the Song for Sage which was possibly a hymn used during exorcisms. Quote, And I the sage said the majesty of his beauty to terrify and confound all the spirits of destroying angels and the bastard spirits, the demons, Lilith, and those that strike suddenly to lead astray the spirit of understanding and to make desolate their heart. End quote. Number five. She is identified as the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Some historical texts and various works of art suggest that Lilith is the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Michelangelo's painting in the Sistine Chapel depicting the fall of man, for example, features a figure with the body of a woman and the tail of a serpent wrapped around a tree which some suggest represents Lilith. A Kabbalah text describes Lilith as the serpent, quote, and the serpent, 
the woman of harlotry, incited and seduced Eve through the husk of light, which in itself is holiness. For evil Lilith, when she saw the greatness of Adam's corruption, became strong in her husk, and came to Adam against his will, and became hot from him, and bore him many demons and spirits in Lilith. End quote. Number six, she can be considered Adam's equal. If Lilith was Adam's first wife, as described in Genesis 1, she was created from the earth just as he was, making them equals. According to the alphabet of Ben Sarah, this equality was a problem that drove Lilith and Adam apart. When Adam insisted that Lilith perform her wifely duties and assume a submissive role, she responded that she would not. Lilith insisted, quote, that the two of us are equal since we are both from the earth and they ended up fighting, end quote. Number seven, she became the scapegoat for unexplainable woes. Because Lilith refused to be subservient and abandon Adam, she sealed her fate as the ultimate female villain. After three angels told Lilith that 100 of her children would expire each day if she didn't return to Adam, Lilith claimed she was, quote, created only to cause sickness to infants. If the infant is male, I have dominion over him for eight days after his birth. And a female for 20 days, end quote. But Lilith would spare children who had the names of certain angels, Sonoy, Sansonoy, and Simonagoth, written on amulets to protect him. Through this tale, Lilith's role grew among the myths people used to explain pain, sorrow, and unfortunate events. Just like her Babylonian counterparts, Lilith became known as a perpetrator of children's deaths. Number 8. The Tamal presents her as a seductress. In keeping with Babylonian representations of Lilith, the Tamal builds on the tradition of her evil, seductive ways. Completed during the 6th and 7th centuries, the Tamal portrays Lilith as a long-haired, winged demon who assaults men while they sleep. The Tamal even depicts Lilith vexing Adam during the years he spent separated from Eve, a time during which Adam became the father of, quote, ghosts and male demons and female demons, end quote. Number 9. Her name appeared on incantation bowls. Incantation bowls designed to incapacitate demons were popular throughout the ancient world, especially in Persia. Jews also used incantation bowls to exorcise demons, though not as often as their Mesopotamian neighbors. As a night demon, one that brought about death and temptation to children and men, Lilith appeared on numerous bowls. The inscription on one incantation bowl describes Lilith as followed. Quote, the evil Lilith, who causes the hearts of men to go astray, and appears in the dream of the night and in the vision of the day, who burns and casts down a nightmare, attacks and kills children, boys and girls. End quote. On another bowl, the inscription reads, quote, Cut off the king of the demons, the great ruler of the Liliths. End quote. Number 10. In the Zohar, she rules alongside Satan. In the Zohar, the core book of Kabbalah, Lilith continues to be portrayed as a dark temptress. In addition to strangling children, she uses the nocturnal emissions of men to bear demonic children of her own. The Zohar, a 13th century text, draws heavily on earlier Talmudic works and asserts that Lilith even tried to seduce King Solomon by disguising herself as the Queen of Sheba. Her efforts are throttled when she is discovered to be a hairy imposter. In the Zohar, Lilith also appears a fearsome queen alongside Satan. Number 12. During the Middle Ages, she received a backstory. In the alphabet of Bensarah, a work produced sometime between the 8th and 10th century CE, 
offers a more in-depth explanation of what happened between Adam and Lilith. Other accounts describe Adam having a wife before Eve, but the alphabet gives her a name and describes their falling out. By providing background on Lilith, Jewish scholars not only clarify the book of Genesis, but also explain how and why Lilith had been a target of harsh treatment for centuries. And number 12. Although Lilith has been identified as a demon, seductress, and scapegoat throughout history, in modern times, women's movements starting in the 1970s have embraced her as a feminist and role model. Proponents of this view see Lilith as an independent woman who makes her own choices, including selection of her sexual partners and controls her own destiny. Lilith Magazine, a Jewish feminist publication founded in 1976, was named after her. Let us know your thoughts about Lilith in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, take care, my friends.